Hey friends, today we're going to go over Ableton Simpler, and this time we're going to focus on where I feel like Simpler really shines, and that's in creating special effects, glitch sounds, and things like that using Ableton's built-in warp feature, as well as its looping features within the, the player of Simpler. And before I get any farther, I should say that anybody using Ableton Intro or Lite can also take advantage of this. This is something that everybody can do, so check it out. So that's the sample I have. I just have a piano chord here. I'm going to drag this into a new instance of Simpler. And right off the bat, when you play uh, notes on your MIDI keyboard, it'll automatically re-pitch the sample to go up and down in pitch, right? So if you watched the last video, the advantageous part of this is that you can put in single cycle waveforms and, and be able to play within, within the pitches of your keyboard. But in this case, we're going to totally rewrite the script on how we're going to look at this. And this time, we're going to turn on looping, okay? So if I turn on looping now, and I play the sample, it's just going to repeat all of the blue area, okay? So the blue area is, is, is the playable audio. Now these two sections are the start and stop um, areas. So I can make the stop area shorter and the start area shorter and start the sample from a different place. Right? As well as the end. What I can also do, though, is I can go into here and I can do some of, there's some of these um, sample, start, stop, loop, length, and fade control. So check this out. If I move this command, you can see that I can move the, the start area. I can also change the length, which is basically the end, okay? And then I can also change the loop area. So it'll start here and then loop here. Right? So what's the advantageous part of that? Well, if you want to start a sample here, that, that's, that's a way you can get sustain. Now, of course, if you do this, you're going to hear that little click. And using the snap control can really help you uh, find areas where there's a zero crossing. What that means is that this is trying to start the sample in a place where it feels like there's not going to be an audible click. It, it, it works okay sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. See, there's a little bit less of a click when I have the snap on. Okay, well, what we can now do is we can fade the beginning and the end of this loop to el eliminate more of that click. Right? And now it's a little more sustaining. So now I can actually open this attack a little bit and I can get a completely sustaining... Right? That's kind of nice. So. So that is kind of like a practical way to use this. You know, this is a practical way to, to, to make a new instrument out of a different sample. You know, I can make these strange chords now. You know, that's nice. But what we're going to explore is a little bit more of the, the, the glitchy grainy stuff, okay? So the next thing that you can do is you can decrease dynamically some of these controls or increase them and get really crazy wild effects. So I'm going to pull the fade back and I'm actually going to turn snapping off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the length of the audio as I play it. So check this out. Now something that's really cool here, this is a happy accident, is that we're actually getting in tune harmonics with this chord as I decrease this length. So what I can do is I can start a new audio track, okay? I'm going to feed the audio in from drum loop one, which is, or I'm sorry, I'm going to feed the audio in from the second track, which I'm just going to go ahead and label simpler, because that's what we're doing. And now that that's armed, what I can do is I can record into this track from the simpler, all right? So all I have to do is hit record here, and it's listening to audio from Simpler, see? I can hit this, record, and I can play audio from this Simpler as I, as I do these commands. So I can... Right? Now I can stop the clock and check this out. I've got this juicy, this juicy audio right here that I can further manipulate later, okay? So let's go back into Simpler and see some of the other tricks that we can do. So if I decrease this length a lot, okay, and I, I just have, and I'm gonna turn this up a little bit so we can hear it. 
if I increase the fade a little bit and then I change the looping section, there's kind of more inharmonic glitches going on, right? <laughs> That's kind of fun. And if I, you know, decrease the fade, I can get more of the brighter. It almost sounds like a like a like a spectral style like filtering, right? So, you know, one thing you can do is you can go ahead and make this as a clip. So I can click on this and I can make a note. And now this is going to play this note. I'm going to stop this. Okay. And within the clip, I can look at this show hide envelopes box. And here's where I can really kind of dial these, these controls in. Now, this is clip automation. All this is is I'm just turning, I'm turning this little window on down here and I'm looking at clip automation, okay? Now, you can use this little drop-down menu to find all the different things that, that Simpler can do or any of the other devices that you might have on this track, but I think an easier way is to double click on the simpler box and click on the control that you wanna mess with. So in this case, we're gonna mess with fade, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw an envelope that makes fade kinda of change over time. We'll go up and then we'll go back down. You know, make it somewhere random, I don't know, something like that. You can also turn off this fixed grid so you can kind of move things around. Um, I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to go back into Simpler and I'm going to decrease the loop length. So I've, I've clicked on the loop length and so it, as long as you click on that control, the automation lane will magically appear in this window, right? I'm just going between double clicking here and then double clicking here, right? So now I can start this here and dynamically as this gets longer, I can look at both of these, and now I have an effect that I've made over time. Check it out. Right? And if I want to capture that, okay, all I have to do is just click here. Right? So now I have two different, you know, grains that I've, that I've collected, or glitches, or whatever the heck you want to call them. Glitches, or how about, we'll just call them effects. Okay, so as you can see, the the I, you know this is this is the the method. Another thing I can do is I can you know use the same clip now, and I've I've automated the start command. So we're gonna start it maybe here, and then we're gonna decrease the start time over time, and just see what happens. I'm gonna stop this. Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll start it earlier. getting the buzzy bee kind of sound, you know, and then just, you know, messing around with these different parameters can get you some pretty wild results. And something that you might not know, another thing I can do is I can just make this a straight line. Something that you might not know is if you hold the alt command, you can actually bend these envelopes to your will. <laughs> Check this out. That's a pretty cool one. So now we're going to go ahead and record that one. So now I have three different pretty rad sounds. So I've got... That one's cool. We've got... And we've got... Okay. And we're all using that same source material, just this piano, right? So if I... Now I'm going to look at more of this sample, kind of starting from the beginning. Another thing that I can do is I can just move the start command through a sample, okay? Uh, starting at the top, where I want the sample to start. I mean, you could start all the way over here, so. Right, that's a pretty fun effect. So, you know, once again, I'm gonna make a new clip, okay? I'm gonna look at the notes. I'm gonna find that note that I'm actually playing. A good way to do that is just to open the piano roll, and you can hit the key and then you can see which one you're playing. So it looks like I'm playing a B flat or a A sharp there. So <clears throat> now I just have this sound. And remember, all the, the method is to click here, find my start command, which is the last command that I stepped on, and I'm going to just kind of go up through the sample. I 
take on this final beat, I'm going to go back down. Okay. And so I hope you can think of what I'm going to do next. Next, I'm going to decrease the, the length. Okay. So the length is going to become less and less as I go through the sample. So we're going to try maybe down to... So now what do we got? We've got that kind of bouncing ball style effect, right? And if I make the length longer at the beginning, I get... <laughs> right? That's kind of fun. So now I can record that. Right? Okay. So, as you can see, I mean, this is kind of the method. As you have a sample and you have a simpler, you can just create yourself a, a repertoire of effects. But as with all my videos, let's take it a step further and let's go, let's go pretty ham here. So I'm going to make a new track. I'm going to get rid of these for now. I'm going to make a new track, put a simpler in it, and we're going to try to do some stuff with drum loops, okay? So this drum loop sounds like this. Kind of boring, boring drum loop. So this, this drum loop was recorded at 94 beats per minute. So I'm, I'm going to drag and drop this into a simpler, okay? And now we have, I get, you know, different pitches, right? And it's kind of ridiculous. But let's just say we know we know what the beats per minute are of this loop, and we know that this is a loop, and that's really all you need to know. You just need to know that whatever you're dropping into Simpler is a loop, okay? You don't need to know what BPM you're going to work with, none of that stuff. So let's just put this up at like drum and bass speed, you know? Let's, let's, let's say we're doing a song at 150 beats per minute. When I play this, <laughs> that's all we get. If I hit warp, however, what I'm going to do is I'm turning on Ableton's warp algorithms, right? This is This is where we can have a lot of fun. I'm turning on this warp algorithm, and if I hit two bars, what will happen is, is it will snap this loop to whatever speed I'm working with. So now I have... If I play it up high, it's stretching the audio, right? So I'm playing way up high here. I'm, uh, if I go down to middle C... Right? Because the beat minute of the song is faster, I'm getting these strange effects, right? But if I play it up higher... And what I can use is these different tempos. To get different renditions of this beat. So then I can play beat chords, right? Well, it gets a lot better from here. So not only, I mean, do we have the beats algorithm, this is, you know, this might be a more practical way to stretch audio, but that's not what this video is about. We're doing impractical, wacky stuff. So I'm gonna turn on texture. So texture is Ableton's, you know, granular style uh, uh, algorithm that stretches audio. So let's listen to what we've got now. So the farther you get away from the, the center pitch of these loops, you can start to get these tones. Now, what the flux command does, this is really going to kind of scramble this up. If I turn flux all the way down, listen to the, to the beat. Do you hear that note? There's a note there. So I'm going to turn on looping too so we can get the loop. <laughs> Pretty wild, huh? So, and then we can also change the grain size. So hopefully your gears are turning now. What, what this is going to actually do is give you the ability to tune your drum loop. So look, if I, if I turn the grain size down here, and remember, we're, we're snapped to the clock. At this point, as long as I'm using these commands right here, I can snap this to the clock. So if I play this, two, three, four, right? Look at that. And if you're trying to go for more atonal stuff, try turning the, the flux up, right? So if I play this, I'm going to play this kind of high. What flux does is it, is it adds a uh, random, it randomly changes the size of each grain that you're making. And if you have lower grain size, you're going to get a lot of fluctuation and it's going to turn into what sounds like kind of atonal noise. Right? So that's kind of atonal noise. Okay. All right, so let's check out one more thing I wanted to show you. Let's drop in another simpler. And if you drop in a single cycle waveform like, like what we had before, maybe something that's got some, uh, 
that's got some harmonics to it, something that's kind of... Let's check out this DNB spike, whatever the heck this is. So remember, in order to use these single cycle waveforms, i got to turn on loop. That's a really good one. That's nice and, uh, nice and rich. Okay, check this out. If I turn on warping, and I open up a little bit of release, listen to the sound. Now, here's something that's really interesting. Because the warping is on, and the looping is on, I could turn snap off too, probably get more harmonics. Because of this, what's going on is it's playing through the sample, but each time it passes through, it's getting quieter, right? So it's because it's making release, right? It's, it's looping and releasing this, this audio. Because the warping feature is on, the algorithm is going to be adding harmonics as you go up and taking harmonics away as you go down. And this is a, this is a spectral style of filtering. So by playing different notes in different octave ranges, I can get this kind of opening and closing of what sounds like a cutoff. I might as well just play it to show you what I mean. And all that I'm doing is I'm going up and down my keyboard playing lower and higher notes. Isn't that cool? So you know you can do this with with you know with any any of these any of these sounds, right? This is a really fun effect to do. I'm just grabbing random sounds and trying them out with my keyboard. Isn't that isn't that wild? And now, if you want to tune the audio, you can, you know, it's going it, to, these are all tuned to, to middle C, so it's just going to stay at middle C, but if you change the loop length, all you got to do is change, you know, you can change the loop length and you can still get the same. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on using Simpler to make uh, special effects. Just go hog wild, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a great idea to set up a second track. Um, and just record all that you do with each one of these instruments. And then you have all these samples that you can use in your song and in your creations that you're making. And, you know, make it really interesting to listen to. Never have a dull moment, if you will. Um, all right. So thanks, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. Love you so much. Talk soon. See ya.